Number 10, California Fire. While some fires are started because of gender reveal parties, others start naturally and violently. This video comes from August 18th, 2020, and it shows the view as someone drives through and tries to escape the Hennessy Fire that was seen in Napa County, California. This looks like something out of the movie 2012. Everything's on fire, it is absolutely terrifying. I don't know what I would do in that situation. What would you do? It's said that this fire was started after a series of unusual thunderstorms that rolled through the area as a tropical storm had been diminishing. So it's just bad timing. These storms brought a reported 10,850 lightning strikes, which in turn sparked about 376 known fires across the state, like this one. Horrifying. Number nine, late lightning strike. Mother Nature is not known to mess around and this video is just, well, evidently so. Usually there's warning signs before some kind of disaster strikes, right? Winds, the sky darkens up, something's happening, but sometimes it likes to come seemingly out of a blue, clear sky. This is terrifying. This video comes from a quiet neighborhood that definitely wasn't expecting this out of nowhere. The sky is clear, birds are chirping, and all of a sudden, huh? How did that happen? That is terrifying. Apparently, this is a sort of weather phenomenon where a lightning bolt travels out from the back of a storm cloud that had recently passed through. So he was a little late to leave the party there. It's good to know that even though it's a clear day, this might happen. So you never know when a storm might appear. Number eight. The Dixie Fire. The Dixie Fire burned through a few different counties in California this last summer. It was named after the creek where it initially started on July 13th, 2021. After it began, it went to burn on 963,000 acres before it was 100% contained. That's a lot of land. It became the largest non-complex wildfire in the history of the state of California. And there's been a lot of fires recently, so that's a big feat. The fire destroyed people's homes, belongings, and completely burned entire towns. And by July 23rd, it had already become the largest wildfire of 2021. This was the cause for unhealthy air quality that could be seen across all of Western United States, including states that were as far as Utah and Colorado. So the damage was widespread. This photo was taken on August 17th and it shows the fire lighting up a hillside in Lassen County. The fire didn't end up being 100% contained until months later on October 25th. This was only a year ago. That it's terrifying. Number seven, lightning strike dash cam. I remember being younger, I would count the time between thunder and lightning, trying to see how far away it was going or if it was getting closer, whatever the fact, hiding under a table. I've never seen lightning close up, you know what I mean? But this is certainly not the case for this dash cam video. This is way too close for comfort. This dash cam catches a lightning strike touching down right beside the car. Check it out. While everybody was clearly okay in the video, it was definitely a strike that would be, again, way too close for comfort. God, I've seen a couple of these now, and it's terrifying. The power of Odin coming down on you. God of War? Okay. Number six, the swarm. Ah, uh, okay, I hate bugs. All of them. Any wings, non-wings, spiders, just get out of here. I'm like, hey, cool cottage. I'm never coming. I don't do bugs. Spray all weekend. I know bugs are important, but there's some that just cause more problems than anything. And you know which one is one of those? Locusts. Yeah, they're in the Bible. They're the worst. This dash cam is an absolute nightmare to watch. This is a video that comes to us from Russia, and at first I thought it was capturing some kind of crazy storm, but it turns out this storm is actually a massive swarm of locusts. There are easily millions of locusts flying around, pelting into the front of this truck, and even the truck had to slow down because you can barely see what's in front of your very eyes. Check it out, this is the apocalypse in 4K. Number five, Europe flood. This photo here comes to us from the summer of last year, 2021, another recent one here. Folks all across Western Europe experienced disastrous flooding. Now after days of heavy rain, it ended up turning rivers that were usually just normal and calm into these raging currents that ravaged the streets and left cars power lines, you name it, everything just swept away and washed. Homes were engulfed, residents were forced to flee. It was unimaginable. This photo was taken at Erfstadt and it shows a bunch of these houses that have collapsed due to subsidence, which is the sudden sinking of the ground surface. It's an absolute nightmare. Germany and Belgium, floods are an absolute tragedy. Rescue workers work tirelessly to help as many people as possible escape this terrible situation. Number four, landslide. This video is one that comes from China from April 4th, 2016. Now during this time, there was apparently very heavy rainfall. Now alone, this isn't too much of a problem, right? But that's certainly not the case in this next scary dash cam footage. Here we see this rainfall and it ended up triggering a landslide that was just seconds away from burying this car. Yeah, one rainfall leads to a landfall, it's terrible. 
Mother Nature is savage. It seems as though the driver in the car with the camera must have known something was about to happen because of the fact that they were slowly backing up. That's good instincts right there. Thank goodness that person quickly passing by was able to brake fast enough that they just missed the slide entirely. It's like some Fast and Furious type stuff. Trying to dodge a train, you're like, no, I'm trying to dodge a mountain, actually. Number three, Oroville Dam. On February 13th, 2017 in Oroville, California, the Oroville Dam, which is the tallest dam in the United States that holds back a reservoir that contains, you know, 1.1 trillion gallons of water. Yeah, that dam's main and emergency spillways were damaged. Now this led to the emergency evacuation of 188,000 people over concerns that the damages emergency spillways might fail. Now this is all caused by torrential rain and floods in the region, which then began to reveal the extensive damage in the emergency spillway. And it's not good. This photo here shows the dam releasing 100,000 cubic feet of water per second into the main spillway. Now luckily a major disaster was avoided in this specific situation because of the quick action by those responsible for the dam. But goes to show you how fast things can uh, overturn. Lakes, that's my worst fear. Drowning is my worst fear. This is now my worst fear. Number two, tornado. Tornadoes are such a wild, natural thing. And this dash cam catches a huge one right as it touches down and rips across a highway. It's your worst fear coming home from work. This video was posted on YouTube by James Hammett. This tornado formed about eight miles north of Laramie, Wyoming on June 6th, 2018. It also shares that this tornado was rated an EF3, which is severe and strong with winds from 218 to 266 kilometers per hour, according to the scale. The video starts off with him realizing that the tornado is about to touch down. So while this of course looks absolutely incredible, and I'm sure as many of you are watching, you're in complete shock watching this massive cloud sky demon form in front of you, but then I became horrified because that's a huge tornado and I wouldn't want to be anywhere near that thing. Like it's one thing to watch on YouTube, you're like, wow, that's crazy. Mother Nature is savage. In real life, you're like, I'm, this is it. This is the last I see. Glad you're okay, I am sweating. And finally, number one, train accident. This dash cam here, it's a bit of an older one. It comes from 2005, but hear me out. We're still talking about this one, rightfully so. This is another police dash cam vid, and this time it captures the aftermath of a train accident that turns into something even bigger. Can you believe that? From one problem to another fast growing one. The video starts off with a pretty dark view, nothing too drastic yet. You can hear voices talking over the radio, all that normal stuff. Suddenly, however, as the cruiser backs up a bit, the picture starts to get a little bit more clear and bright. Brighter, way brighter. The voices on the radio then start to explain how there was an explosion after the accident and how now things are on fire and said fire is only growing. The rest of the footage shows the police car backing up as it captures this huge fire that continuously grows to a level I don't think anyone was expecting. Videos like this really show how quickly these things can get out of control. Even when you think you have the situation on lock, it just opens up another big issue. You're like, oh, now who do we call for this one? This list at number 10. This was a category five major hurricane that struck the Bahamas, Florida, and Louisiana. This is the most destructive hurricane to ever hit the United States until Hurricane Irma surpassed it 25 years later. By Saturday morning, Andrew was gaining strength as the eye of the hurricane hit the Bahamas with wind speeds of up to 122 miles per hour. Florida lay just 10 hours ahead. Andrew was now 100 miles across. Is this real life right now? 100 miles is a massive, a massive hurricane. At the time, this was the largest hurricane to hit the Bahamas, Florida, and Louisiana. So out of hundreds of years, this hurricane was gonna set all kinds of records, which is very scary for us. This hurricane took the lives of 65 people. Next up, we have a death toll of 230 to 500 people in Mexico when Hurricane Pauline hit back in 1997. While well, she's roaring in this list at number nine, Hurricane Pauline was one of the deadliest Pacific hurricanes to make landfall in Mexico. This storm caused massive flooding and mudslides in some of the poorest areas of Mexico. It is also one of the deadliest Eastern Pacific storms in recorded history. Around 300,000 people were left homeless. By the time we were able to react, my father and I were pushed out of the house into the river. My mother and sister were not there anymore. 
Next up we have a hurricane that cost a record $125 billion in damages. The effects from this hurricane is still there, it's still happening today and it took the lives of almost 2,000 people. And we're talking about the horrifying Hurricane Katrina that took the east coast by storm in at number 8. Hurricane Katrina was extremely destructive and a deadly category 5 hurricane that struck the Gulf Coast of the United States back in 2005. My aunt who actually lived in New Orleans, she still has a house down there, well she suffered from the storm. My aunt's been in like 2 or 3 hurricanes. New Orleans was 80% underwater. This was the most powerful storm since the 70s when Hurricane Camille hit. This massive hurricane lasted over 1 week and it had winds up to 280 kilometers per hour. Along with the hurricane, it spawned massive tornadoes as well, and the tornadoes made it all the way to Pennsylvania. There was five tornadoes in total. Millions of people were left without electricity, something we take for granted sometimes. The whole east coast of the United States didn't have. They didn't have power. There were hospitals that lost power and they also lost fresh water for almost one week. Imagine needing surgery but you can't have it because there's no electricity. Really, really scary event that unfolded that week. Order. Katrina made landfall. Now at number 7 we have Hurricane Okeechobee that took place back in 1928. So one of our oldest hurricanes on this list. This devastating hurricane killed around 2500 people. This hurricane developed off the west coast of Africa and it strengthened into a tropical storm eventually hitting Guadalupe, Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Bahamas and Florida. It seemed like Florida is always getting hit by these massive hurricanes. There are many places affected by this hurricane even Atlantic Canada was affected. This this is how much impact Hurricane Okeechobee had. There was so much rain and flooding, some areas was 20 feet underwater. Houses and buildings were just swept away. We didn't know how bad it was or anything, but he asked different people to go and spread the word that the, there was a hurricane coming. Now moving on, number six, we have Hurricane Maria. Puerto Rico, and a staggering new number out this evening. We have traveled to Puerto Rico so many times since Hurricane Maria hit the island. More than three million American citizens live there. The official death toll had been 64. Tonight, that death toll now 2,975 lives lost. So you heard it just now. Hurricane Maria killed around 3,000 people and it caused almost $100 billion in damages. This was a category 5 major hurricane that is regarded as one of the worst natural disasters on record to affect the Dominican and Puerto Rico. This hurricane hit in 2017, so just last year. Hurricane Maria was actually the third consecutive major hurricane to threaten this area, which is totally insane. It's almost like watching day after tomorrow. The 2017 Atlantic hurricane season was a hyperactive and catastrophic hurricane season that totaled up to almost $300 billion in damages, which makes it the costliest bad weather storms in history. There was also well over 3,000 deaths. The three hurricanes that year was Hurricane Harvey, Irma, and Hurricane Maria. A massive hurricane that caused $6 billion in damages and killed over 11,000 people along the way. Well, at number 5, we're talking about Hurricane Mitch that struck the Atlantic back in 1998. This hurricane lasted over 2 weeks and it stayed strong throughout its disastrous course. Hurricane Mitch is known to be the second deadliest hurricane in the Atlantic. Mitch formed in the Western Caribbean Sea and it drifted through gaining strength as it hit Central America. Because of this storm, it was estimated that Honduras was set back 50 years of its economic development. That's because of how costly the storm was. Imagine a storm that cost billions of dollars and now instead of taxes and money going towards schools, healthcare, 
and other things, it's going into rebuilding structures. Historical buildings were also affected. Buildings that were over 350 years old were destroyed. You can't build back history. The deadliest hurricane in US history, but not the deadliest in the world, blows its way into number four on our list. We're talking about the Great Galveston Hurricane. I think it's time we stop giving these hurricane human names and calling it the Great Hurricane. This hurricane took place in the 1900s. It was a category four hurricane that killed around 6,000 to 12,000 people. This hurricane actually traveled a very long distance and it killed people on the east coast of Canada as well. The hurricane lasted almost 20 days, which is absolutely insane. The winds were up to 230 kilometers per hour. Galveston, Texas was flooded up to 12 feet of water. That's deeper than the deep end in most swimming pools. Almost every house in Galveston was destroyed. 30,000 people in the city were left homeless out of the total population of 38,000. People tried to evacuate their home and when the storm was finally over, a lot of people found their homes totally destroyed or on its side. The Great Hurricane of 1780 destroys its way through the Atlantic, taking no mercy in at number three. This hurricane is the deadliest Atlantic hurricane on record. Between 20,000 and 22,000 people died in this freak of a storm. Mother Nature is a bitch sometimes. Specifics on the hurricane track and strengths are unknown because the official Atlantic hurricane database only went back to 1851. But it was predicted that the winds were up to 320 kilometers per hour. It would be the highest winds in history. The great hurricane of 1780 hit Barbados with top winds of 320 kilometers per hour, totally destroying the island. The wind was so powerful, bark was actually coming off trees. It was just being peeled off. About 4,500 people died in Barbados. A fleet of 40 French ships involved in the American Revolutionary War was struck during the hurricane. Several hundred soldiers died. Now at number two, we have the 1975 Typhoon Nina, which is known in the Philippines as Typhoon Bebang. This storm killed over 231,000 people. There were many collapsed dams due to heavy flooding that caused an even bigger problem. This powerful storm lasted for one week and winds got up to 250 kilometers an hour and it cost China and Taiwan over $1.2 billion and that was back in 1975. Over 600,000 people were displaced. After the storm, you couldn't even recognize the city. Everything was moved and totally damaged. Roofless houses and floods in the Rinconada area of the Bicol region where Typhoon Nina made its second landfall. Thousands of Bicolanos fled their homes to evacuation centers on Christmas Day as Typhoon Nina sustained winds of 185 kilometers per hour. With up to 500,000 people who lost their lives back in 1970, we have the devastating Bola Cyclone. And this Bola Cyclone struck East Pakistan and India's West Bengal. Bola Cyclone comes into this list at number one. This storm has been known as the deadliest tropical cyclone ever recorded and one of the deadliest natural disasters as it killed half a million people. This storm was powerful and it lasted for 10 days. Let me show you guys some of the footage that was released to the media. In Tazumudin, Bangladesh, 45% of its population was lost due to the storm, which is insane. So that's 167,000 people. Winds were up to 240 kilometers. There were reports showing that weather services did not share information of the upcoming storm in time to save people. Pakistan was not prepared for the storm at all. Number 10, a brinicle. A brinicle? What? Not a barnacle. AKA the ice finger of death that I just mentioned. Sounds scarier than it actually is, but it's definitely as cold. Mostly found in, you guessed it, icy regions. These crazy ice fingers happen when rapidly sinking icy salty water hits the ocean floor. This brine is colder than the water it's passing through, and as a result, it forms ice crystals slow enough for the human eye to see. But when it hits the bottom, it fans out, claiming the lives of any nearby slow moving crustaceans or starfish. Humans don't really need to fear them, especially because divers don't often dive in water that cold. However, special divers who study them have to be careful and take precautions to prevent hypothermia. 
but still really cool, eh? Number nine, the door to hell. Many superstitions surround the door to hell and you can guess why because of the name it's being given. Duh. This place is so mysterious, people even think this might be one of the doors to hell. Why? Because this pit has been burning over 40 years. In 1971, scientists discovered the area while attempting to drill for oil on the site. While drilling, they accidentally hit a gas pocket and the whole thing collapsed into a crater. Scientists were nervous that poisonous gases might be released into the air, so they set it on fire to burn off the gas. Of course, expecting it to stop eventually, but it hasn't yet and you can even visit should you wish to test the theory that the devil is waiting for you, you naughty thing. Number 8, Blood Falls. The name Blood Falls is a name that pretty much describes exactly what someone said when they first saw it. Oh look! A waterfall of blood, because that's exactly what it looks like. Located in Antarctica, this natural phenomenon terrifies onlookers as bright red water flows against the stark white of the snow. But the actual reason behind this phenomenon is far less gruesome than initially suspected. Anyways, nobody got murdered, that's the thing. Beneath the Taylor Glacier, a super salty body of water was trapped around 2 million years ago, entirely cut off from oxygen, heat, and light. When a fissure appear, this lonely water pocket slowly leaks out and reacts with the oxygen in the air and the result is this fantastic hue of red trickling down. Crazy, right? Number 7, Fairy Circles. Should you ever get the privilege of enjoying Namibian safaris, you will not only get to witness the oldest desert in the world, but wild horses, wildebeest, and dick dick for example. But one of the most mysterious sights are the fairy circles. Across the desert landscapes, there are strange baffling barren circles surrounded by patches of vegetation, each around 10 to 65 feet in diameter. They span for hundreds of miles and local legend says that they were created by the footprints of gods. And for a while that was the only explanation. Scientists were stumped when it came to this phenomenon, though through decades of research they have discerned that the circles form due to termites and self-organizing plants. But if you prefer to think that fairies or gods form them, I think that's still pretty, pretty cool. So, up to you. Number six, the red crab migration. Perhaps even stranger than an island named Christmas is the red crab migration that happens there. Around October and November of every year, these bright red crustaceans swarm and crawl all the way to the seaside to prepare to breed. They absolutely cover the island floor like a bright red crusty the crab flood. The reason they migrate is specifically timed to the lunar cycles because by the time they reach the beach, the tide is low enough for them to bury their eggs so that when it rises again, they can hatch and just go right into the water. So if you plan on spending some time on Christmas Island just to see if you'll meet Santa, make sure you've got some iron toed shoes. Don't want to accidentally get pinched by one of these guys, that would suck. Number 5, Lake Natron. Introducing the deadliest lake in Tanzania, Lake Natron. Many people visit Tanzania for its beauty and to witness the might that is Mount Kilimanjaro, but very few wish to encounter this lake. Though it's pretty cool to look at, its magnificent orangey red color is essentially a warning flag. This place is so poisonous, keep out. Due to a caustic mixture of minerals and salt, this lake could burn your skin off, except for flamingos love this place, it's where they raise their young, mostly because predators won't go near it. But they have to be careful, for if it rains too much, the water can raise the alkalinity level of the lake so high that it could even kill them. Only one kind of fish, the alkaline tilapia, lives in the water amongst hosts of salt obsessed microorganisms. Cool. Number four, bioluminescence. This is probably one of my favorites because I just think it's so magical. From bioluminescent glowworms in New Zealand to biobays in places like Puerto Rico, these magical little creatures add yet another reason as to why nature is so beautiful. Personally, visiting at least one of these sites is on my bucket list. Bioluminescence is a kind of glow in the dark effect that has a breathtaking result. For instance, dino flagellates in Puerto Rico give off a neon blue green color, creating a stardust appearance while you walk on the beach. The reason it happens is all due to a chemical reaction that happens inside their cells. When two different molecules come in contact with oxygen, it produces light. Animals control when this happens by controlling the movement of the oxygen in their cells. And some even have a symbiotic relationship with creatures that can't do this. They get safety and they get to be their host's own personal flashlight. 
sweet deal. Number three, lightning strikes more than once. Well, at least it does happen in Venezuela. One of the most fantastic lightning storms in the world is near Lake Maracaibo in Venezuela. Besides being absolutely massive, measuring 5,100 square miles, come rainy season, you're in for quite a show. Around October, this lake absorbs around 28 lightning bolts per minute, amounting to a staggering 250 bolts per square kilometer per year. There are a couple of theories as to why this happens, but scientists still haven't been able to confirm any concrete reason for it. In the 1960s, scientists put forth that it might be due to high amounts of uranium or that methane released from oil fields caused it, but there still remains insufficient proof. So my theory? Thor likes to go swimming in the rain. Why not? Before we go on guys, make sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe and head over to Bumblebee as well and give that some love too. Number two, the sailing stones. They may not move fast, but when they do, it confuses the heck out of people. Unless they're called the Rolling Stones. They've been touring forever. They're probably gonna keep moving until they die. This phenomenon is located in California and these rocks seem to be anything but dead. In the middle of the desert, there are stones that have massive trails behind them, though they can't be moving due to any gravitational force. They vary in size from a couple to hundreds of pounds. It took a while for scientists to figure out just how this was happening and the answer will still make your brows furrow. Through an experiment using a freezer and some Tupperware, they may have the answer. With the right combination of ice, water, and wind, the rock can be lifted by the melted water and moved, leaving the trail in its wake. Still sounds pretty crazy, but hey, nature is pretty wild. And last but not least, Will of the Wisps. Will of the Wisps are so interesting and I can imagine the first person to ever see them must have thought it was magic because of course, which in a way science kind of is magic. After all, just because something has a logical reason doesn't make it any less magical. Will of the Wisps are tiny balls of light that appear above swamps and bogs. Of course, they have been the subject of fairy folklore for hundreds of years due to their mysterious appearances. There are a couple of theories, one that they could be white owls reflecting light off the surface of the water to fireflies, to fairies, but the leading theory is that they are actually balls of methane gas. Methane is a common element in swamps or marshy areas due to the amount of decomposition happening beneath the water surface. As the methane rises to the surface, it reacts with phosphine, another gas found in these areas, creating the blue light. There is still a fair amount of skepticism surrounding this story, so if you do want to believe that they are in fact fairies, Go for it. In our number 10 spot, we have Venus passing the sun. I remember when this happened and it was extraordinary. Now, if you missed it, then that's okay. There will be other magical space phenomena that will happen in your life, I'm sure. But if you didn't, then you will probably remember that on June 5th and 6th of 2012, Venus passed across the sun, causing a small black dot to appear on the sun's surface. It was pretty spectacular and lasted for only six hours. Unfortunately, it will not occur till 2117, so we won't get to see it again, but our great great grandchildren will, so that's cool for them. Anyways, it feels like there's something new happening in the sky all the time these days, so if you miss this, it's all good. I bet you next we'll all witness a spaceship coming to Earth, and that will be way cooler than Venus looking like a dot on the sun. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to subscribe to us for more content like this. In our number nine spot, we have regrowing a set of teeth. When we are born, we grow baby teeth, and then when we get to a certain age, they fall out and we grow adult teeth. But the process then ends there. If we knock out our adult teeth, then that's it. We can never regrow a set of teeth. It's so interesting to think about the fact that this only happens as a kid and then never ever again. It almost makes the baby teeth falling out process super special, and perhaps this is the root as to why the tooth fairy legend was invented as a sort of celebratory occasion that will never happen again. Probably not, but whatever. For your tooth, I shall give you a dollar as a congrats. This is something that will never ever happen again in an entire lifetime. I will definitely make this a celebratory event when I have kids. In our number eight spot, we have a dirty thunderstorm. All right, so what is a dirty thunderstorm? Well, it's a very rare and fantastical thing to occur, and it is created only by a powerful volcanic eruption. Lightning bolts shoot out of an erupting volcano, which is what gave it its name of being dirty. It is apparently one of the most terrifying yet breathtaking things to ever see, and really, it's a once in a lifetime sort of thing if you see it. Over the last two centuries, over 200 cases of volcanic lightning have been documented 
documented. So it's safe to say that probably 200 people have witnessed this. So if you're a part of that very small percentage, then you are very, very lucky. In our number seven spot, we have your first words. The very first word you ever say on this planet is an extraordinary thing. You will never speak your first word ever again. Your first word could define your whole personality. Okay, fine, that's a stretch. You're a baby. But still, I'm convinced that the humans that say poop as their first word are probably going to grow up and be the class clown, let's be real. This gave me the idea to look up some of the funniest first words ever spoken, and so I've compiled a list for you. Here is my list within this list. This is quite the inception moment. Number one, poop, of course. Two, balloon, huh. Number three, shoes. A future shopaholic right there. Number four, cheese. <laughs> and five, gargoyle. All I can imagine is that the parent must have some kind of hunchback of Notre Dame stuffy that's a gargoyle, because how the heck is that a first word? Just kind of creepy and hilarious all at the same time. Anyways, the first word is a fascinating phenomenon that will never happen again. In our number six spot, we have fire rainbows. A fire rainbow is neither a fire in the sky nor a rainbow, but a result of light being refracted as it passes from the moon or the sun over the ice crystals within the atmosphere. This especially happens with cirrostratus or cirrus clouds in the sky. How frequent is it? Well, this is dependent on a few factors, including the region and latitudinal location. In the USA, you can see a fire rainbow usually in the summer, but you rarely can see this phenomenon in Europe. The areas that won't see it are usually ones that are 55 degrees north and south of the equator, and that is usually due to conditions required for the formation of their circumhorizon arc. The discovery of the fire rainbow has led to scientific study that has boosted the study in light and the creation of artificial fire rainbows. This would truly be a once in a lifetime thing to see unless you live close to the equator, but still, it would be truly beautiful to witness. In our number five spot, we have the water elephant. This is something so cool that I found that I'm excited to share. This is one of those things that just randomly happens and it's once in a lifetime and you can't explain it, but it's mind blowing and so cool to see. This is a picture of an elephant in a lake with four humans that are seemingly helping it take a bath. They are throwing water on him and someone is taking a picture when the most extraordinary thing happens. The water that was thrown on the elephant was in the shape of an elephant. What? That's a magic, you cannot convince me otherwise. In the moment, I bet those people didn't notice, but I wonder how their faces looked when they saw this picture. Life can be so randomly beautiful, and this is definitely one of those moments. In our number four spot, we have fire tornadoes. Fire tornadoes are very, very rare, and are really quite a new phenomenon, only being documented quite recently. As you can imagine, a fire tornado essentially occurs when great turbulent wind meets a fire, and this creates a a rotating eddy of air, which then expands into a tornado. The fire tornado is also known as the fire whirl, fire twister, and fire nado. <laughs> like I said, they're quite rare, but some people did observe one in 2003 in Canberra, Australia. In our number three spot, we have this bizarre once in a lifetime outfit. Okay, this is certainly bizarre, and it happened naturally, and it certainly is one of those things that you see once in a lifetime, and it made me laugh, so let's take a look. A girl posted this pic online and entitled it, Has anyone seen my grandma? <laughs> I truly laughed out loud when it hit me that this girl's grandma is dressed exactly like the carpet. <laughs> How? Well, I mean, the print is very grandma and carpet-like all in one, but still, so funny and bizarre, and I couldn't help but chuckle, so I had to share. In our number two spot, we have the blue lobster. Okay, so before I begin this one, I have to say, I had no idea that a blue lobster even existed. So, lo and behold, it does, folks. And this person online shared a picture of one that her friend's dad caught. Apparently, the chances of catching this lobster are one in a million, so yeah, 
this is one of those situations that doesn't even happen for most people in their lifetime. Apparently the odds of the lobster being blue in the first place is one in two million, so yeah, this is a very rare thing to happen. I googled why it is blue and it is this way due to a genetic abnormality that leads to an overproduction of a certain protein. Anyways, this is pretty cool and I would think it to be very lucky if you ever saw one in person. In our number one spot we have your first love. Your first love, your first kiss. Ah, they're so special. Aw, I'm feeling so romantic, guys. <laughs> Can't help myself. This is one of those things that will never happen again, which is why most of us never forget our first love or first kiss. The first has an impact on us and can often define our perspective on relationships in the future unless we go through intensive therapy. <laughs> My first kiss is something I will never ever forget and I certainly won't forget the first time I fell in love. Love is such a bizarre, natural, human experience and one I wish for all of you to experience in your life. Ah, shucks. Okay, we're getting all sappy now. Love you guys. Picking up this list, in at number 10, we have the 1762 Arakan earthquake, which is estimated to register an 8.8 .8 magnitude. The earthquake lasted for about four minutes in Chittagong. It was reported that no buildings or walls built of brick had escaped either destruction or serious damage. An area of about 160 kilometers square permanently subsided beneath the sea along the coast near Chittagong. A bar chara, the land sank, and 200 people were killed. Chittagong was said to have suffered severely with soil liquefaction effects such as sand volcanoes and ground fissures. Number 9 brings us to the 1611 San Riku earthquake. It had an estimate 8.9 magnitude that also triggered a devastating tsunami that reached a maximum height of about 20 meters. According to the older documents, 1,783 people were killed in the Sandai domain and over 3,000 horses and men died in the Nanbu domain. Coming into number 8, we have have the 1869, this happened a long time ago, San Riku earthquake that had an estimate of 8.9 magnitude. The earthquake and associated tsunami struck the area around Sandai, Japan. The tsunami caused widespread flooding of the Sandai plain with sand deposits being formed of up to 4 kilometers from the coast. Despite a lack of the reliable sources, an estimated 1,000 people were killed by the tsunami. Rumbling its way into number 7, we have the 1700 Cascadia earthquake. The earthquake occurred along the Cascadia subduction zone on January 26, 1700, with an estimated magnitude that was recorded of 8.7 to about 9.2. The mega thrust earthquake involved Juan de Fuca plates that underlies the Pacific Ocean from mid Vancouver Island in British Columbia, Canada, south along the Pacific Northwest coast as far as Northern California. The length of the fall ruptured was about 1,000 kilometers with an average slip of 20 meters. Number six takes us to the Eureka earthquake. This occurred on August 13, 1868. Near Arica, which used to be part of Peru. It had an estimated magnitude of about 8.5 to 9. A tsunami in the Pacific Ocean was produced by the earthquake, which was recorded in Hawaii, Japan, Australia, and New Zealand. The earthquake caused almost complete destruction in the southern part of Peru, resulting in an estimated 25,000 casualties. About 400 aftershocks were recorded by August 25th of that year. The 1952 Kamchatka earthquakes comes into this list in at number 5. There was a major earthquake in the Pacific Ocean that was about 100 30 kilometers from the shore of Kamjaka with an estimated magnitude of 9. This earthquake constructed a deadly tsunami that occurred on November 5th of 1952. There were about three waves about 49 to 59 feet high. After the earthquake, the majority of the citizens fled to the surrounding hills where they were able to escape the first wave. However, most of them returned to the town and they were killed by the second wave. The third wave was minor. According to the authorities, out of the population of 6,000 people, 2,300 136 people died. This is more than a third of the people. The remaining survivors were evacuated to the continental Russia. Number four takes us to the 2011 Tohoku earthquake that had a magnitude of nine. On March 11, 2011, this is more recent. This took place at 2:46 p.m. A 9.0 magnitude earthquake took place 231 miles northeast of Tokyo at a depth of 15.2 miles. The earthquake caused a tsunami with 30-foot waves that damaged several nuclear reactors in the area. The total confirmed numbers of deaths and missing is nearly 22,000. Material damages from the earthquake and tsunami was estimated to be about 25 trillion yen, which is approximately 300 billion dollars American. Making its way to number three on this list, we have the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake with a 9.1 magnitude. This earthquake devastated parts of Indonesia, Sri Lanka, India, and Thailand. This disaster was the world's deadliest tsunami with over 230,000 people killed and half a million injured by the waves that battered the low 
Hawaiian coast. The relatively shallow water where the earthquake struck that the energy released was equivalent to 23,000 Hiroshima type atomic bombs. That is insane. Coming into this list, in at number 2 we have the 1964 Alaska earthquake that had a 9.2 magnitude. Also known as the Great Alaskan Earthquake, it occurred at 5.36 p.m. AST time on Good Friday which was on March 27, 1964. And this took place across the South Central Alaska. It lasted for 4 minutes and 38 seconds and was one of the most powerful recorded earthquakes in North American history. Soil liquefaction, fissures and landslides caused major structural damages in several communities and much damage to property. As a result of the earthquake, 139 people are believed to have died. 15 people as a result of the earthquake itself, 106 people died from the subsequent tsunami in Alaska. And finally, we've come to our number one spot for the biggest earthquake, and we're talking about the 1960 Valdiva earthquake, which was a 9.5 magnitude earthquake. This was also referred to as the Great Chilean Earthquake that occurred on May 22nd. The earthquake occurred beneath the Pacific Ocean of the coastline of Chile. Ground motion from this earthquake destroyed or damaged thousands of buildings. The Chilean government estimated about 2 million people were left homeless. There are many different casualties estimated for this earthquake as well. They range from as low as 490 to as high as approximately 6,000. Most of the casualties was caused by the tsunami in Chile and from the ground motion. However, people as far as the Philippines were killed by this event. Coming in at number 10, we have the 2004 Indian Ocean Tsunami. This event is known by the scientific community as Sumatra Andaman Earthquake. And it took place during Christmas time on Christmas and on Boxing Day. It was caused when the Indian plate was subducted by the Burma plate and it triggered a series of devastating tsunamis. It affected 14 countries, killing over 230,000 people. These waves were sent over 100 feet in the air. Indonesia was the country that was hit the hardest, followed by Sri Lanka, India, and Thailand. So the magnitude was 9.1 to a 9.3, making it the third largest earthquake ever recorded on a seismograph. This earthquake made the whole planet vibrate. So the devastating construction cost to rebuild everything that was damaged was in the billions. Everything was destroyed. The worldwide community was able to raise more than 14 billion dollars in humanitarian aid. Okay, moving on to the number 9 spot. Now we're talking about the 1970 Ebola cyclone. It was a very devastating tropical cyclone, which struck East Pakistan that is now Bangladesh. It remains the deadliest tropical cyclone ever recorded, and definitely one of the deadliest cyclones in modern times. Up to 500,000 people lost their lives, and the damages was estimated to be about $86.4 million. And when you think about it, back in the 70s, that's a whole lot. The country has moved and actually lost 45% of its total population. The hurricane reached a category 3 with winds of up to 185 kilometers an hour. Okay, so you probably remember this one because it happened not too long ago. And I'm talking about the Haiti earthquake that happened in 2010. And this comes in at number the main area that was hit was Dominican Republic and the earthquake turned into a tsunami that killed about 100 to 316,000 people. And it was estimated 3 million people were affected by the earthquake. Many of them lost their homes, their jobs. Within the first 9 hours, there was a total of 32 aftershocks. That was a record. And the magnitudes of those aftershocks was about a 4.2. The initial catastrophic magnitude was a 7. There was nearly $4.5 billion pledged worldwide. Up next, in the 7th spot, we're talking about the 2005 Hurricane Katrina. This was the 11th named storm and the 5th hurricane of 2005. This became the deadliest hurricane of the United States of America. And at this time, George W. Bush was in office. Many lost their lives on this day, most of them from Louisiana, with about 1,577. And the damage was about $108 billion, which makes this the costliest hurricane to hit the Atlantic ever. So Hurricane Katrina was a Category 5, the highest rate. It affected places like the Bahamas, South Florida, Cuba, Louisiana, New Orleans, and that's just to name a few places. The 1976 Tungsten earthquake that took place in China moves in to the number 6 spot. This is believed to be the biggest earthquake of the 20th century according to the death toll. The number of deaths initially reported by the government was 655,000, but the numbers were reduced. And since then, the new numbers is about 240 to 255,000. And there was another report that actually said that the death toll could be higher. So as of right now, what we know is the numbers is unknown. But what we do know is the magnitude of this was an 8.2, followed by a 7.1 magnitude aftershock, which happened about 16 
16 hours later. And at the fifth spot, we have the Indian Cyclone, which took place November 25th, 1839. And it hit the village of Korninga, which is located in India. The cyclone triggered a 40 foot wave that destroyed much of the village and the ships around it. And it drowned about 20,000 people at sea. An estimated toll of over 300,000 people lost their lives. The port was destroyed and was never fully rebuilt. Koringa today, if you were to look at it, it just remains a simple village. Now at number four, I'm talking about the Shanxi earthquake. And it occurred January 23rd, 1556, making this the oldest natural disaster on this top 10 list. The Shanxi province is located in northern China. The catastrophic earthquake has an estimated magnitude of eight and killed approximately 830,000 people. The death toll has been believed to reduce the population of its province by 60%. And this is because the earthquake struck right in the middle of a densely populated area where the construction is very poor. The earthquake also triggered landslides, which caused an 840 kilometer wide area to be completely covered. Moving on to number three, we have the 1887 Yellow River Flood. This is a very devastating flood on the Yellow River in China. This river is prone to flooding due to the elevated nature of the river. There was even another huge flood in 1931, in 1938, and of course again in 1958. 1958 being the last time though. The flood took the lives of around 900,000 people. It left 2 million people homeless. In 1931, the Yellow River consumed the lives of about 4 million people total. But now with the technology, we are able to control the river and use it as hydroelectric power dams. Okay, we are almost at the number one spot, but coming in at number we have the 1931 China Flood, and this is another one. It was a series of floods that took place over a couple of months that spanned across the whole country. The floods killed between one and four million people, making it the deadliest natural disaster according to the death toll. And it has such a wide range in casualties because in the 30s, China didn't keep a record of the death toll, and if they did, it probably would have been washed away anyways. All right, let's get into the number one spot. We have finally made it here. And I'm talking about the deadliest drought. From 1876 to 1879, China recorded the deadliest drought in history, making it the worst natural disasters of all time. It did not rain consecutively for three years and the river ran dry killing crops and livestock. Over nine provinces were affected by the lack of food production and the drought ended up killing over nine million people. In June of 1879, heavy rains began to fall in much of the famine area and with the harvest that fall. The worst of the famine was over. However, many rural areas have been depopulated by starvation, diseases, and the migration of people to the urban areas. Coming in at number 10, we have this tidal wave distracts and starts destroying everything on the ground. Now when I say everything, Thing, I literally mean everything. Now it is presumed that everybody not on a rooftop or a higher building or anyone in the street or in a car were washed away to their deaths. Buildings can be seen being swept along the street. They're kind of like bobbing ducks. It's insane. <laughs> Coming into number four, we have the Boxing Day tsunami in Thailand. On Boxing Day in 2004, swathes of the Thai coastline were devastated by a tsunami. But actually, it wasn't just Thailand affected. We'll be seeing a number of pieces of footage from the Boxing Day tsunami on this list, as it was the deadliest tsunami in history. It killed 230,000 people across 12 countries. Now, in this piece of footage, a tourist shot some film in Patong. They film a huge wave as it comes in from the beach. Now, we hear them freak out when they realize just how big the wave is. They run inside their balcony and try and get away. I know, I can see it. That wave oh is a good 15, 20 feet tall. Easy. Coming into number three, we have a man swept under in the Thai tsunami. This is some heartbreaking footage right here. In this video, we see people huddled on a rooftop. The camera catches a man, someone who looks to be like a white tourist. He's clutching onto some debris trying to stay afloat. Sadly, he is lost to the water. We 
have another person swept under at number two. Now this is some of the most dramatic tsunami footage I've ever seen. This horrifying video is a symbol of man versus nature. It is absolutely terrifying. So here we hear two locals watching the waves roll towards the beach during the Boxing Day tsunami of 2004. The guys recording point out a tourist still on the beach who doesn't realise that he's about to be swept away. Just as he realises how high the waves are, he stands up stunned in the face of the tidal wave. Finally, coming into number one, we have CCTV footage from around the Iwait prefecture. This is the final piece of footage from the Japanese tsunami of 2011, and it is insanely heartbreaking. One moment you're looking at a road, the next you're looking at a road turned into a river. Literal houses are floating down the highway. Later, we see a car driving up the road, and he tries to turn around. Unfortunately, though, a whole ocean of water and debris comes towards the car, which goes out of shot, but presumably it could couldn't outdrive the gushing water. Which is dirty thunderstorms. Okay, these things aren't called dirty because they're a bit rude. Now, this thing might look like a portal to hell, but it's actually formed when electrical charges are generated inside a volcanic plume. Rock, ash, and ice particles collide and build up static electricity. And if enough static electricity builds up, it comes crashing down, and you end up with pictures like the one behind me. Pretty mental. Lightning and volcanoes are a great way to start off this video, but now it's time for our number nine, which is the Christmas Island crabs. Once a day, every year, something very special happens on Christmas Island in the Indian Ocean. No, I'm not talking about Christmas, I'm talking about the red crab migration. Every single year, about 40 3 million of these migrate across the island to lay their eggs in the ocean. Now, this was all very well and good until humans came along and built their homes and roads in the way, and now they've had to build special crab bridges for all the crabs to walk over. Why did the Christmas Island crab cross the road? To lay its eggs for the next generation. Yeah, I think that only really works with chickens. So let's move on to our number eight, guys, which is ice fermaroles. Now, although these might look like some kind of ice chimneys, they are actually totally natural. They form in Antarctica from volcanoes beneath the ice and snow. The heat from them rises and melts the snow to form a cave. And when the steam continues to rise, it freezes to form these icy towers with steam coming out of them. They can actually reach up to 60 feet in height. Pretty crazy stuff, but we've got a lot more ahead. Number Number seven now, guys, which is the sailing stones. This is an amazing phenomena where stones seem to move by themselves across the floor in places like Death Valley. For hundreds of years, nobody could figure out how these things seem to move by themselves, year after year, with no evidence of human or animal intervention. Well, after seven years of research by a team of scientists, it was concluded that under certain weather conditions, enough water and ice can form to float rocks across muddy valleys in a light breeze, leaving the mysterious trails behind them. Seven years they tracked rocks moving across the mud. That's why I love science, doing the job that no one else wants to. From seven years now to our number six, we're talking about the reflective salt flats. In southwest Bolivia lies a 4,000 square mile area of salt flats. Now, salt flats are formed when water pools evaporate and leave behind all their salt. This one, though, is particularly special because when it rains, the miles and miles of salt and water form an incredible incredible mirror that is so big and reflective that governments use it to calibrate their satellites. It literally forms a perfect mirror of the sky and is way more reflective than any ocean. Next time you tell someone to go and take a long hard look in the mirror, tell them to do it in this one. Anyway guys, let's move on to our number five, which is bioluminescent waves. Okay, this thing is mental. It looks like something made in Photoshop, but I promise you guys, this is totally natural. So what makes these waves glow like this? The answer is tiny, tiny microscopic organs organisms known as phytoplankton. These things are bioluminescent, which means they made their own light by turning chemical energy into light energy. Sometimes these little fellas get caught in ocean currents, brought to the surface, and pushed onto beaches. And when that happens, the results can be spectacular. So we're at number four already, and I want to show you guys something amazing called columnar basalt. It might sound like a weird sciencey 
name, but it's actually a really cool phenomena caused by volcanic activity. The most famous example of this is probably the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland. And just look at those perfect looking pillars of rock. It looks like humans made them, but they were actually created by molten basalt intruding through chalk beds millions of years ago. Now, personally guys, I prefer the ancient Celtic myth about how these things were formed. Apparently the Giant's Causeway is all that remains of an ancient bridge built by two giants who wanted to fight each other. But we're in number 3 now and it's time to get all creepy crawly with the spider web blanket. If you thought the thousands of spiders swarming over you only belong in your nightmares or Harry Potter, then I'm afraid to tell you it's actually a natural phenomenon. Back in 2012, the Australian town of Wagga Wagga was flooded which forced thousands and thousands of spiders up into plants and trees where they ended up forming huge webs together that completely blanketed some parts of the town. They stayed on these giant platforms until the water subsided and they could all just return to their home. So next time there's a flood near your house guys, don't worry about the water, you should be worrying about the spiders. But now it's time to move on to our number 2 which is the flowering desert. This event takes place in the Atacama Desert in Chile. It's a very dry place and receives less than 12 millimeters of rain a year, but every 4 or 5 years it gets a higher than average amount of rain and suddenly the barren wasteland is transformed into a blooming miracle of nature. Countless seeds that lay dormant beneath the surface for all those years suddenly got the rain they needed to burst into life. Over 200 species of flowers appear which in turn bring lizards, reptiles, birds and animals. Soon though everything returns to normal with with no sign of life until the next heavy rain. I guess that goes to show all good things come to an end. Just like this video guys, let's do a quick recap. We've looked at floods of spiders, we've even looked at rocks that move by themselves. But now it's time for our number one, which is the Aurora Borealis. Otherwise known as the polar lights, the Aurora Borealis is a fantastic lights display that only occurs in the polar regions of Earth, but can sometimes be seen in more populated areas. They are caused when electrically charged particles from solar wind accelerate along the Earth's magnetic field and collide with gas atoms, causing this spectacular spectacle of light. If you're from Scandinavia, Northern Canada or even Scotland, you might be able to see this. So go out and look and check it out if you can and tell me about it because I'm jealous.